This is our theme song. Do you like it? I wrote it. (laughs) (laughs) Just kidding. I did write these lyrics, though. Oh. Mm. (laughs) Say what? (laughs) (laughs) My name is... Oh, okay. (laughs) 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 All right, so for real, my name is Jason, and I do like to rap. This is Mini Biking Ain't Easy, a Go Power Sports podcast. Today, as always, I have my main man, Zane. Producing, making sure that we're staying on track. We have Bernie's on the ones, twos, and threes. Yo, yo. And today we have a special guest, Mr. Harley Wrangle. Hey, guys. So what's up, dude? Just collecting mini bikes and hanging out. <laughs> so those who have not caught, we have done a customer profile on Harley. We've been to his house. He has showed us his collection of everything other than mini bikes as well. I mean, all your toys. Yeah. If you haven't seen that video, check it out here. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> so since that video came out, how has your life changed? Are you being stopped on the street for <laughs> autographs? Well, what's going on? No, no autographs. Since that came out, I have gotten a new car. I got a, uh, my aunt and uncle gifted me a 77 Datsun 280Z. Go ahead and throw what? that up right here, Zane. Oh, yeah, we'll throw that picture right up. Yeah. So, that is yeah. pretty clean. That's probably one of the nicest gifts. Yeah. I mean, I know that it's a parting gift. Yes. Okay, tell us this the whole story. Well, it was, they had it in their will for me to have, and then they decided, they knew I was going to car club every Saturday, which I do, which I mentioned in the video, and I had that van, I sold the van, and I joked a lot about having this van-sized hole in my heart, and I, I think they <laughs> they took it a little seri- a little more seriously than I was being, but they just decided to give me that Datsun now so they could watch me enjoy it, basically, and I've been actually been talking to my uncle quite a bit about things that I've been working on on it and stuff, and it's pretty ready to go, but it just needed a couple of things. So if you look at that video, my half of the garage was all shelves for mini bikes. When they told me I was going to get that car, I sold probably half those mini bikes. Oh, wow. The Scat Kitty being one of the ones that I didn't Man. know I would have. Man. Like, if you if I went back to that time, I would have been like, oh, I'll never sell this. I may have even said that in the video, but I came down from Oklahoma and paid up for it, so I sold it. Sold maybe 10 other bikes, 10 to 12 other bikes. Got my collection down to about half of what's in that video. I think today I've got 10 bikes, but I was able to, so I was able to cut that shelving unit in half, turn it this way, and now I can pull in and I can still have I still have room for 10 bikes. Very cool. Also sad. So I'm just wondering the life of mini bikes, I guess, in your garage, in your heart. Do you feel like you're going to start collecting other things? Do you think still mini bike is still a part of you? Uh, well, I just I drove down to a little past college station for a mini bike two weeks ago. So mm-hmm. it's still there for sure. I'd probably pickier of what mm-hmm. well, I'll jump in the truck and go get, or even if it's just in the neighborhood, like a little pickier now. Like what's helped me actually stop buying mini bikes is I'll see one and I'll send it to a friend. Like just send it right <laughs> away. Like I don't have to be the I don't have to be the guy to go get it. Yeah. Plus the video's done, so <laughs> yeah, 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 the video yeah. as soon as as soon as you guys left, I like sold everything. <laughs> You're doing kind of like a Marie Kondo thing. You're like, you're letting it go before it becomes part of your life. Yeah. That's smart. I like that. <laughs> I mean, I've gotten a couple of mini bikes in the last couple of weeks. So I'll still buy them. I'll bring them home, decide if I want to work on them or tell them to a guy at Lodge because we still, we're still doing parades with Lodge. Nice. Or one of the bikes, Lodge guys on a fence on one of them, I might take it, hold on to it and take it to pay. What's, a, so what's the Lodge? I belong to Oddfellows Lodge. Oh, okay. Uh, independent orders of, uh, order of Oddfellows, and my lodge is in Waxahachie, Texas. Gotcha. Yeah, and uh, that's how I got into mini bikes. We were, were riding them in parades and stuff. And I was then, wondering what IUF was. Yeah, independent okay. order of Oddfellows. Yeah. Gotcha, man. So I still, I'll still get them for guys. I've got one that this guy's on the fence. If if, I, if he doesn't buy it, I'll take it to Pate and okay. roll it up with all the bikes. And so you will be a Pate. I will definitely be a Pate. Yeah. Now, typically, we just had Mr. Tim on. He said, the reason why I can't find anything is because Harley usually shows up to pay the day before and just buys everything up. And so now, no room for them. No room for them, but I will be there the day before. Buying, okay. things. <laughs> <laughs> buying something. Now, do you have your eyes set on anything else? I mean, always Hornets, but I mean, all mini bikes. Uh, there's a couple of dots and things I'm looking for, but I probably won't find dots and stuff there. But What do you have uh, planned for the 280Z? Um, really, I'm re- redoing the wheels right now. The clear coat failed on them, so there is a bunch of funk under the clear coat, so I'm having to strip all that down. And I was going to get new wheels, but I really like the, just the OG wheels, I decided. Oh, yeah. I, uh, I, had a, I drove to Houston because this guy had a bunch of Datsun parts and I needed some center caps and the center caps for this model are 
super hard to find. And so I went down there, uh, grabbed them, and I tried looking for mini bikes while I was down there, but nobody uh, nobody had any mini bikes for sale. So I contacted Sam, all the guys in Houston that get mini bikes, and nobody really had anything for sale. So mm. it was just car parts. So still mini bikes, dots and parts. Anything else in your life you kind of feel like you're still kind of collecting, I guess? Uh, I mean, I just got a Volkswagen go-kart body. Uh, nice. Volkswagen Beetle is a hurry love bug. Whoa. Fiberglass body. Like hey. anything that's cool like that, I'll still buy and try to make room. So that I didn't have room for that. I had a I just set my garage up for the Datsun and the and the mini bikes and I had to re reshuffle a few things so that I could put that go kart kind of like you guys do, like just up on the wall. Like. Mm-hmm. Are you going to put a go kart inside that? that um, so the guy didn't have the right cart. And I ended up selling that cart, and I was thinking about looking for one that fit. It, you know, it's got to have those, like, side rails that come okay. off so the body attaches to it. I was thinking about keeping an eye out, out for one at Pate, but I kind of like it on the wall. So mm. if I don't find one at Pate, it'd be, I'd be fine with just keeping it, just keeping the body up on the wall. Make sure you send us a photo of that. Oh, we'll do. Yeah. Okay. So, so we, we can, can throw that here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right. All right. <laughs> All right. So what else is up, man? So what do you do for a living again? I know it's AT&T. Yeah. Work for AT&T. I do finance IT type stuff, like technical side of uh, finance for mm. AT&T. I've worked for AT&T for 22 years now. 22 Whoa. years now. Yeah. I work from home 90% of the time. I typically like seven to four type job so i still have time after work to work on stuff we're a little busy now so i have a little less time to run up here before you guys close and yeah so your extra time outside of work what kind of, what is filling your time these days uh, the dots in these days uh just keep making sure that you can get it in running order it doesn't yeah run? it runs it runs really just messing with it messing with the wheels uh, getting things uh buttoned up a little bit there's things like the fuel gauge wasn't working stuff small things but yeah, I've been driving it around. And your oldest is now in college? Oldest is in college down in Austin, and we see him when we can. My daughter is in ninth grade, so she's kind of on autopilot. She has been for the last couple of years. You know, nice. Student of the month, right? Student of the month this nice. month, yeah. Oh, whoa. Congrats. Yeah, her name's on the marquee. Yeah, she's pretty awesome. What's your wife up to? What's Lindsay up to? Collecting plants and cactus and succulents and stuff still like our house is overrun with them so her side of the garage until like two weeks ago was just full of plants and i had the dots and and the, the mini bikes i was dealing with that and her whole side was just plants because it wasn't warm enough to pull them out yet and mm. as soon as it hit like 60 or something i helped her like loaded them all in the truck just so that i could take them to the front because we also have a puppy that's pulling stuff out oh. of all of her planters and stuff wow. so what kind of puppy he is a whippet what is a whippet? Oh, uh, it's like right a picture here. here. <laughs> Stretched out greyhound, I guess. Yeah, it's oh, a little wow. small greyhound, like like a greyhound. Like they're, it's a sighthound. Look, they look exactly like a greyhound, just uh, like medium size and sort of mm. large. Nice. Yeah. How did you come across the dog? Well, we had a female whippet probably when you guys were there, but okay. I, we probably had her put up. And we, I really like her, so we got a boy whip it because she is kind of a pain in the butt mm. and we just heard from all the whip it people that we we need to bring a puppy in and it needs to be a male puppy and the male puppy is just crazy he's just <laughs> he's a male puppy no, like, twice as crazy <laughs> twice as crazy pulling stuff up taking stuff outside that shouldn't be outside like mm. he's getting a little better now he's like 10 months old now i think but uh he'll start settling soon yeah hopefully yeah. <laughs> For your sake. Yeah. And the plants. Yes. Yeah. So um, then after pay, we have Pool Start Picnic. Yes. Now, are you familiar with Pool Start Picnic? I am familiar. I've uh, planning on going. A couple of guys in the car club have their, like, Tim's age-ish and have had mini bikes their whole lives. They are also planning on coming and entering bikes, which nice. is cool because they like to have their weekends for the garage and stuff. So mm-hmm. cool that they're going to get out and and set up some mini bikes with me. So. Oh, that'll be fun. Yeah. Uh, by the time this thing airs, it'll be after Pull Star Picnic, which will have been a, a, a huge success. There's yeah. going to be tons of people there, and I'm so glad that your friends came out and we were all able yeah. to hang out and, and shake hands. And Jason, that's a hell of a cold shot yeah. right there, man. I love it. <laughs> how many How many do you plan on bringing? Uh, Ten's the limit. Ten's the limit. Five or six. Okay. Yeah. Probably, I mean, I just have a truck, so and I don't have a trailer or anything, so probably five. Do you know what categories? Probably all old school. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Basically as many as you can fit in a Datsun. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs>
So we haven't really met and gotten to talk too much before. How did you get started working on mechanical things? How did you get started working on cars, on mini bikes? Tell me a little bit about yourself, man. Yeah, so uh, I didn't do any of that stuff until I joined Oddfellows about six years ago. We got into mini bikes for the parades. Okay. Uh, and the mini bikes is really what started me. I had an old car right out of high school. I didn't know what I was doing. I shouldn't have had it. I didn't know what I was doing with it. And I started hanging out with the car club because one of the guys had a bike that I wanted and they happened to be on a on one of the mini bike forums and they're like oh we live in hearst texas and that's where i live like oh awesome so i went by their shop and they had a lot of mini bikes and super nice guys so i started going to breakfast with them and then got that van and they helped me with the van and uh showed me a lot of stuff that i just wouldn't i just don't know about stuff like that so uh that's been awesome the main guy that's into mini bikes in the garage has always like loved mini bikes but i i feel like now that uh he and i are kind of both collecting like pretty cool old mini bikes okay He's not as crazy about it as I am, but he is definitely, uh, he, he knows everything I know. He's like, he's taught me. And, okay. Uh, except for Evan Spear, actually. Like, I was thinking, I was watching Evan's, <laughs> I was watching Evan's interview. And when I first got into mini bikes, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know how to change it. I didn't know how to do a chain or anything. And one, like one night, I think I was really stuck. Yeah, I went to Evan's house and he had, to, he had to show me how to change a chain. Uh, like, I just couldn't do it. It's like super awesome. And I think I'd met, I'd met him on mini bike Saturdays yeah. here. And, uh, Mm. And we just became friends from, from there. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Okay. Shouts out to Evan. Yeah. Shout out to Evan Spear. Well, Evan and his crew, he had like three or four people that were like, yeah, we weld all, all through the night. Yeah. Come on out. Yeah. I don't know if you ever went to something like that. I never went to that. I think that was like somewhere off of 35 somewhere. Yeah. I think they told me about it and I just it just never happened. But yeah, yeah I think they were going to weld something for me on some bike. But like even now, like I'll have a bike, I'll need something done with it and then I'll Somebody will want that bike more than me, so I just won't have it very long and just never needed that thing welded on that bike. You said earlier that you kind of keep your eye out for Hornets. Are there any other, like, old-school designs that you like, really aim for? I've got a trail horse, and I really like both of those style. They're a little on the bigger side, mm. which is funny because I really like the micro bikes. <laughs> but, like, the Rupp, the Hornet, and, like, and the trail horse are just really nice size, just good bikes. and For ride, for actually riding on? For riding, yeah. I don't race, but I like okay. to build them up and just cruise around. I keep my eye out for Hornets, but I've had a lot of Hornets, and I don't get as excited as, like, maybe Tim or mm. Evan get about okay. or uh Jeremy. No. Oh, man, you're going to have to edit this. Uh, <laughs> Stanley. Oh, Stanley. Yeah, okay. Stanley. How often do you guys get to do parades? Uh, so, first of all, I don't know much about the Odd Fellows. Okay. So, if you want to mind telling me a little bit about yeah. it. Yeah. So Oddfellows is a lot, it's a fraternal order, like okay. Masons or Shriners. Okay. And so we get together, We actually our lodge gets together every Monday mm. out in Waxahachie. And we have dinner, and then we have a meeting. And in the meetings, we try to figure out like what we can do for the community, if there's a charitable event that we can do to raise money for whatever cause somebody has brought to to lodge, basically. And then on top of that, for in Waxahachie, like the Fourth of July parade. Oh, sorry. Fourth of July You're parade is a real good. is a big parade. So we get geared up for that and the Christmas parade. Is, okay. Is a big, those are our two big parades. The two big uh, ones. Yeah. Do you usually do a few more in between those? Uh, or, or really, use, those are the main ones. Those are the main ones. The state fair used to have an opening day parade and it would go through downtown Dallas and all those people working in downtown would come out and line the streets. It's super awesome. But we only did it one year and then uh, state and then they changed. They moved to like the fairgrounds for that parade. Oh, okay. Big gotcha. bummer. But yeah, so now it's really just two parades. Okay. That's still cool, though, that you guys get together and that you also are doing so much in the community. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's super cool. We do, uh, like, we just raised $4,000 for, uh, there was like one little event at a theater in Waxahachie that just opened. Just super cool that we can get together, bang something out, and raise some money for just charity. And, nice. So, yeah. And the mini bikes are kind of a part of that? Uh, the mini bikes are kind of a part of it. I mean, our lodge. Specifically, Oliver has a shop on the first floor of our lodge, and he's got a ton of mini bikes down there. So okay. a lot of guys, it kind of excites a lot of guys at lodge to get into mini bikes or to buy a mini bike and build it. But uh, it's not really directed to. It's not really um, directly. It's not. Yeah, it's mini bike adjacent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Got you, man. Shouts out to Oliver Peck. Yes. So everyone who comes like into Lodge every week or every other week, they have to go through this mini bike store? Or? No. It's kind of side by side, but as soon as you open the door for our Lodge, you immediately go have to go okay. upstairs. Yeah. And so it's a second story. Okay. Now, are there like big windows where they... There like, are big windows and, they're, <laughs> and Oliver's got like... He's got the like George... Uh, I don't think the George Barris anymore. That may have sold. He's got a couple of cool bikes on both windows with the spotlights on them. So even like at when Lodge is over and it's it's nine and it's like completely dark out there. You see these spotlights on these old mini bikes in the big windows. Super cool looking. Oh, that's mm -hmm. awesome. 
We should go by and get a shot of that sometime. Yeah, you're just getting enticed every single time you walk by. Yeah. yeah. How cool is that? So he sold a bike, and then I came to Lodge. Like, this was just three weeks ago, maybe. Then I came to Lodge, and Tommy, who runs the store, had put a new bike up there. And it's a bike that I've seen every every Monday since we got that big haul yeah. that was in the last video. But he put it up in that spotlight, and I walked by it. I went back, and I looked <laughs> I looked at it, and I immediately went to go ask him, like, hey, how much do you guys want? Oh, my God. <laughs> 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 like, I see it, I, like, every Monday for two years and just walked right by it. But these bikes are so, they're vintage for sure. Mm -hmm. Are they going for over a thousand dollars? There are some that do, like it depends on how much he likes them. It depends on like how how much he values their, like what bike it is. Mm -hmm. There's bikes that he likes just like Tim. Like there's bikes like he either isn't gonna sell it or it's gonna take a lot to sell and he'll put a price on it. And it's you either buy it or you don't. I want to pick your brain about what gets you excited about consuming, but first we're going to take a quick break. We're going to hear a few words from our sponsors, and we'll be right back. Whoa. Hey, Jason. Everything good? You want us to come back, man, or? How? I'm trying to get these people to figure out how good of a deal this Rascal Light is. Well, you, you tell them it's a super cost-effective kit. Plus, it's a complete mini bike for under 500. Yeah, da, 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 da. I want these people to feel this deal. A deal. A great deal. Hey, maybe we should go get some fresh air. Yeah, go get some fresh air. Any ideas yet? So, what do we think? All right, so we just asked how much mini bikes are kind of going for in the store. Is there a certain price where you won't pick up a mini bike? Like, will you say like $1,000 is my limit, or will you go easily over that? I won't easily go over it, but yeah, it just depends. I mean, there's a ton of factors. Like if there's a bunch of stuff I'm gonna have to cut off of it, and if it's original and it's like all complete, then yeah, $1,000 is probably my max, even if it's worth more than, like even if it should be more than that. like still my max like what if you came across like a hornet that was completely you know ready to ride everything's there remodeled but still all original parts would is that something that you would spend a thousand dollars on or do you enjoy getting something vintage and building back or restoring it my favorite thing to do is find one that's complete but needs to be like maybe something needs to be bent back a little bit or i mean really needs to be gone through cleaned up maybe bolts either changed out or polished and then yeah, the paint's still all good. Like, I put more value on that than I do, like, a cool bike. Like, I'd rather have original paint and mm-hmm. stuff like that. So you try to steer clear from projects, <laughs> big projects? I think at this point, I try. To, I would like to stay clear of big projects, yeah. So, like, at paint, if there's a Hornet and it's just a basket case Hornet, like, I, I'll let Stanley buy that Hornet, and, yeah. like, I'll wait for, like, one that's just nicer and just doesn't need as much, like, because maybe Stanley or whoever has still the energy or the interest in like doing that much work to a mini bike but i i just i'm kind of past that i think i think it's tough because i know that if you if you were to find an old vintage bike 
and then restore it. I believe the, you would have so much money dumped into this mini bike yeah. to where it, you would have to ask for a couple thousand dollars. You know, Evan said maybe 1500 bucks for his Hornet. Yeah. Just because you put so much time and effort just to get something original. Ah. Well, and that powder coat job too. Yeah. yeah. That was pretty nice. But as someone like you, would you pay 1500 bucks for something brand new like that? I mean, I would not. I understand that people would and should pay fifteen hundred dollars for a mm-hmm. bike that somebody's redone like that because it's a lot of work and that stuff's not free and it adds up for sure. And fifteen hundred dollars probably even cut in a little low, like probably for like the chroming. I think there was chroming involved on that bike, like yeah. that specific bike. I mean, it's a beautiful bike, but yeah, it would be somebody that just either didn't want to do any of that themselves or couldn't do any or just doesn't have the time, just could care less. Like here's my money and mm-hmm. now I've got this bike. I'm somewhere in between like not wanting a big project and also not wanting to pay up for like a bike that done because. Yeah. Because I know somebody that does powder coating. So just for me personally, like that's not a big incentive that somebody powder coated. Like really, if I find a bike and they're like, oh, but I powder coated. I'm like, yeah, but you powder coated it yellow and I'm going to have to strip that because I don't want a yellow bike. (laughs) You just made me do more work. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Have you ever traded weird things for bikes before? I don't know if it was a bike. It may have been a go-kart. I I did trade a go-kart body, like one of the van bodies, I think, for powder coat. My friend that does powder coating, like that kind of stuff. But I can't think of any other kind of trade Mm. other than mini bike to mini bike, but nothing weird. Okay. So I I was actually curious about this. Do people trade like Pokemon cards or whatever? People trade like one-to-one mini bikes. Like here, I'm going to, you know, I'll trade you this one. I have a Hornet and you have a Rup and, you know, we both want to try them out or whatever. I want to work on it. So people do one-to-one trades like that? I mean, I've traded mini bikes, yeah, but not, I mean, it's not super common. It's not like, okay. uh, yeah, it's not like a thing or anything. But, um, but yeah, like when I've had like 25 mini bikes in the garage and like somebody wants that Hornet that I've got three of, I'll be yeah. like, yeah, I'll t- give me your Sears or whatever and I'll, I'll, oh, I'll okay. have this Hornet. Got yeah. you, man. Okay. And you wouldn't even think about a new bike like a, a Trailmaster Hurricane or anything? Something that's, you know, has like all the brand new technology. Does that excite you at all? That does not excite me at all. Like, uh, I think they're cool looking. Like, I think the ones that you guys like got souped up for the 180, mm-hmm. like a lot of those were cool. The one that uh, I think Jeremy maybe yeah. was riding looked super cool. But it's a little less exciting when there's like a whole store of them like down like i can just go buy that tomorrow or i can buy it next year or i can buy it and it's it's like they're cool for racing but they're not it's not vintage so it's not exciting to me really so because you like to collect that's like your biggest thing you do you see these more more as art than anything right yeah i think that's fair to say also like looking at the old ads i like like looking at the old ads and trying to figure out what mine's missing or you know like what it's going to take to complete mine on those ads and just the research involved and i do appreciate the brakes on the new bikes for sure like i had a Coleman for a month or two last year because I was going to take it out to Oliver's place. That was going to be kind of my uh, Yellow Rose bike, but I got bored with it and sold it in like a month. It's, it's, <laughs> those things are massive. Like they just take up so much space. Like I could put two vintage bikes or this one Coleman bike. So if you just started getting into mini bikes when you got in with the lodge, did you have a collector's mentality of anything else before the mini bikes? Yeah. I mean, tattoos, posters, like silkscreen posters. I got into right out of high school, going to shows and mm-hmm. getting the poster for the show you just went into. I got, I've got a flat file cabinet full of posters i think we have video of that yeah oh I've that's got, awesome yeah i've got crush boxes with posters in there a guy that i'm buddies with that does cool posters did a poster of he does these like animals he does bear on this vintage mini bike with like the with yeah. the keys hanging yeah. off the belt loop and stuff super cool toys like i always had toys in high school like just toys on my dresser like whatever mcdonald's toys came out and i still have toys all over my workspace and Dang, I guess yeah, like those Lego scooters you had on your cabinet. Oh, really yeah. Cool. So these posters, they live in a box at the moment. What's the end game? <laughs> yeah, there's no <laughs> That is the end game. So some of them some of them are up in the house. Some of them are framed. I got into building frames for a while, so I would get get out there with the table saw and like build frames and that was that took up some time and was cool to do. But most of the posters are just like, Oh, that's a cool poster and I'll buy it and then I'll flatten it and I'll put it in a crush box or crush proof box and now it's just under the bed for nobody to see. So is there like ever like if I ever move and get like a man cave, I'm a suit the whole room is just going to be these posters or no i mean right now my hallway is almost floor to ceiling like framed posters going down my son's room before he moved to ut he and i like agreed on posters that he and i both like and that's almost like there's almost no wall space because it's all posters now do you still collect these posters there's still like some one will pop up and like man 
that's for, and I'll send it. I'll send a picture to, to Lindsay. And like, do I need this? She's like, you're just gonna put that in the, in the flat file. I'm like, all right, and I'll I'll move on. Or some of them, like if I really like it, I don't ask her, and that's how I know. <laughs> like, and what size are these posters? I think the average is 18 by 24. There's smaller ones, like depending on the artist, or there's like. 24 by 36 which are just huge and, and when you say they pop up is this on the internet or is this at shows or at shows shows is kind of like my weakness right now i'm at a show and like there's this poster that i and i collected posters and i'm at this show and like or like ethan my son's at the show with me like i'm gonna get this poster because my son and i went to this concert and, and this post you said it's a silk screen yeah just like you screen shirts and same process or similar process what was the last one that you got as a tattoo artist in Portland, just put out some prints and oh, I got, yeah. nice. Yeah, so they're not all show prints. Some of them are just like an artist of any mm -hmm. kind will put out, will do either his own posters or he'll, he'll send artwork out to a printing company and they'll print posters for him. Oh, that's cool, man. Yeah. Your well, son got into screen printing, right? He did. Because I think when we did the video, you were trying to get rid of yeah because he was moving out Did yeah you i had to that? pull some of that out of the way yep. yeah we sold that uh a young guy came out that well wanted to get into it so he bought he bought all of his equipment and yeah so my son would started little posters and then he was doing t-shirts for like the high school he was when he was a senior he was doing like the club t-shirts for just the different oh, clubs and that's awesome yeah it's a good skill yeah it was cool to watch him do it i couldn't do it but so I'm just picturing, do, is your son already starting on tattoos and sleeves and stuff? I'm just picturing a much smaller version of you in college, <laughs> which is probably not real. <laughs> uh, it's close. I mean, he's a big brain, and I've got small brain, but he's got one tattoo already. It was his graduation present, and our friend Al Oliver Peck did it for him and nice. up at the shop. Nice. And Ethan worked for Oliver at the at his printing company mm. over the summer that year. So, oh, okay, yeah. gotcha. I mean, if someone's going to do your first tattoo. Yeah, yeah, it's a good, <laughs> yeah, like, it's way better than the first tattoo. I got. What was the first one you got? Uh, I don't know. Some tribal eagle thing, maybe. I can't remember what the first one was. It's under a ton of other tattoos now. Oh, like, okay. Yeah. Where, what, like? Yeah, up here. Somewhere. Right up here. Okay, yeah. I, that, that's where I, my first tattoo was up here as well. Yeah. So yeah. I only have two, though. I'm not nearly as cool as you are. <laughs> I'm, I'm super jealous. I really like the style of all of your tattoos there. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Has Oliver done any of those? Oliver's done three tattoos on me, but they're like back here. And so odd fellow tattoos and if I had more space I'd definitely be hitting them up for any mini bike ones I do have a mini I've got a scat kitty I've got a Felix on a scat kitty oh uh, nice yes. okay yeah like right here, right here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and That's we'll put that one right now <laughs> I know Taylor was asking Oliver about doing a mini bike tattoo and he was down so oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so how do I get my hands on purchasing that bear on the mini bike with the keys because wasn't that a rendition of you yeah yeah I'll give you one he gave me a stack of them for real mm -hmm. yeah. okay nice. So now you got my head running. We have a, a talented artist who does a lot of our artwork, and I wonder if I should get. Would anyone buy our screen print stuff of our some of our special logos? I think so. I mean, they buy that stuff now, right? Like your yeah, yeah. But I mean, but you're just talking a about like, I mean, I would, but <laughs> I don't, I don't. but we've established you have a problem. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Because uh, there's some things I want to commemorate because they're a one-time thing. Like our Pool Star Picnic, we got a brand new logo for that. We have it on a t-shirt, but I'm thinking, are there people out there who, I mean, we're trying to get collectors to come in, look at our mini bikes. Do they also want to collect silkscreen prints of our logos? Yeah, yeah. that's a good question. I, I You're supposed to help me out here. Yeah. I, mean, why you're here. I actually really like that one back there. I think that would look super dope on a poster. Because when you're talking about doing the 24 by 36, I, in my head, I'm like, I feel like you could get that those proportions just about right yeah. and throw that up there. That'd be a nice big old poster to yeah. throw out. Is there anything we're missing on that we should be advertising on, merchandising? <laughs> anything that would spark your interest? No, I mean, the posters is a great idea, I think, but I'll think about it. Okay. Yeah. I need your help. Do you like rags? Yeah. Do you like use rags? rags? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like shop rags are cool. Mm. Okay. Well, actually, speaking of speaking of cool merch, uh, can uh, we get your idea? Can we get your thoughts on a couple of items that yeah. we have for you? Let's do it. Yes. Oh, okay. So that that text made me laugh. I was with Taylor when you texted and <laughs> said, "Hey, I, I hear all your guests get a get a goodie bag." <laughs> now, were you referring to someone who got a mini bike from us? Yes. Okay. No. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Because no, we did, I was just being we did give a frame to, to Andrew. We did, yeah. But yeah. I think he's like the only person we actually gave something to. Were you no, referring funny. to something? No. no oh, no, you were no, just, just busting yeah, me. I, okay. I told you. It just, <laughs> well, never mind. <laughs> he was speaking it into existence. <laughs> Do you have a little rascal by any chance, or the big? Was it the big rascal? It was the big rascal, and it now lives with a lodge buddy of mine. 
Would anyone? Do you think anyone would be down with like a holographic oh, of our stickers? Cool. There's that. Can you hold that up for the camera real quick? There's also holographic like pull start stickers. Is that? Oh yeah, those are cool. Well, that's just it, a GPS one. Is holographic cool or not? Yeah, that's super cool. Look at that. This is a window cling that Taylor and I are the only people that have one where you can put it on the back of your truck window. Oh, cool. I've even been through the wash and it's still on there. <laughs> so cool. there's that one to give you that. Here's another. Well, you know, actually sh show the people oh, with yeah. that one. It's a mini bike. I'm being told, uh, do you have any <laughs> that don't say Go Power Sports on them? <laughs> and oh, I think. Then <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> here's another one. So we'll try that. Oh, cool. I want to also tell you thank you because because of you, you helped me find a supplier for actual gloves. Oh, yeah. Right. So I wanted to give you a pair, and I, and I took a chance on your size. Oh, dang. Where uh, Hopefully it's dainty because I, I got little girl hands. So these are our... Bison gloves from Grifter. These things are clean. Go ahead and test oh, those out. Awesome. Th those are a medium. Tim's going to be so upset. He just said, hey, you see how much these are and you bought a hundred of them? <laughs> 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 You're just now giving them away? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and those are great. I have mini biked in them. I've also cut wood in them. I've oh, also cool. kept my hands nice and toasty in them. Uh, oh, man, that fits great. You can oh, do whoa. anything with them. Those are sweet. And over time, since they're leather, you just keep pounding them in. They're just going to keep conforming to your hand. Awesome. I love these gloves. I've only used them for about two weekends. But yeah, I can't wait till everyone else gets their hands on these. You should have seen it a couple of weeks ago. He didn't take them off. <laughs> Five straight days. He showed up every day to work. Took a bath in them. <laughs> yeah, don't wear them around Taylor. He will smell your hands. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you should smell them. They smell like leather. Man, those are awesome. But yeah. <laughs> So that's only one pair. We're going to do another pair with Grifter. They've been great just to work with. Oh, cool. I love the style of the Cheap Thrills gloves. Yeah. So we want to do different fabrics and whatnot. But I figured as a baseline, there Awesome. You go. Thank you so, very much. So thank you for finding out <laughs> that glove supplier. Yeah, thank you. Now, I don't know if you have any of these, but like I was talking about, we got the Pool Start Picnic coming up. Here's a large. This is done by our, our, our buddy Thomas. Oh, cool. I love this artwork with is, Dave on the back. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Is this the same guy that did the the Rascal stuff? Yes. Awesome. Yeah. Shouts out to you, Thomas. Thank you for being awesome. Yeah, that's cool. So there's your commemorative shirt. Awesome. Thank you very much. Wear it with pride. Now, I, would someone take that, this, on a screen print poster? I mean, I would. Okay. But I don't yeah. <laughs> you take everything. I got you. And so that that's one shirt, and I didn't know if... I just went ahead and got another one. This is our, it's like our, our, our mono panther, kind of like a, oh, cool. our guy back here yeah. showing that Fort Worth pride. It's a soft tee. Awesome. Now I'm curious. Now these are two different tees. One has color. One is mono color. But the biggest thing is this one is super soft. Yeah, they are super soft. But is super soft a bad thing? What do you gravitate more? Because that one's a little heavier. What would so Harley I like, wear? I like softer shirts, but there's, I think, maybe this soft. Like, because this is soft compared yeah. to, like, Gildan or, you know, yeah. the heavy shirts. I think I like this style of soft shirt. Cause some Tell of these, me why. Well, some of these stretchy soft shirts are a little harsh on the man boobs. Like, uh, <laughs> like some some of them, like... Who will throw up sensors? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I need this kind of feedback because I only think of myself. I don't have man boobs at yeah. the moment, so everything just falls and feels nice and cozy. But I got to think about the older gentleman or the Harleys yeah. <laughs> in my gang. Yeah. <laughs> you have notoriously insensitive nipples, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good to know. And, uh, I don't have anything else for you. So. Oh, cool. Thank that you. is, that is a nice shirt you have on right now. Shouts out to Rick oh, and yeah. Busted Knuckle Bill. Oh, yeah. Yeah, do you prefer heavier shirts? I prefer this okay. exact shirt. Like the cheap thrill shirts are the same. Like they're soft, but they're not the stretchy spandexy soft. Not like okay. overly. Yeah. Yeah. I understand. All right, man, boobs. Uh, <laughs> we are going to take a quick break. We'll be back after these messages. So you've been talking about getting new tires. Well, now's the time. These 16 by 6 8 V tread tires are on all black 8 inch floater wheels and are perfect for Trailmaster Mid, Blazer 200R, and Hammerhead ADT go karts. And right now we're having a limited time closeout deal on these go kart tires $99 for a left and a right. That's two tires for $99. Let's go to a scientist and get the math on that. It's a great deal. 
You can get yours at... Oh, you can go get yours now at www.gopowersports.com. Or if you're on YouTube, click the link up above. And we're back. Go ahead. Well, you had a few questions for Harley, didn't you? Yeah, I did. So you got started on mini bikes pretty late in life. Yep. Not late in life, but let's say you got started. There's a lot of guys who are like, oh, yeah, I had a mini bike when I was, you know, four years old. And then yeah. I didn't not touch it again until I was 50. Yeah. But you just got into it when you were in your early 40s. Correct. Yep. What was that like when you were like, oh, these things are kind of cool. I like working on them. Yeah. What was it like? Well, I, the first bike I got was a doodle bug, and I thought I was cool with, with that. And then I saw a couple of friends' vintage bikes. I was like, oh, man, I sold that doodle bug pretty quick and <laughs> got vintage bikes. And, I mean, I've never really been shy about asking people for help. Like, I mini bike Saturdays was a thing here, so I'd get a lot of information from uh, Taylor and just Evan. Ev everybody that was there basically like would come out and help and had no problem asking for help. I have no problem telling a guy I don't know how to bust a chain or I don't know how okay. to, like I know Jason's been out there, like I know like I've had help lining up a chain. I remember doing it out in the parking lot. And, uh, so uh, it's hard, I mean it was, it wasn't hard, but it's a lot to do when you know nothing about it. Like mm. you've never really worked on even a bicycle to messing with mini bikes. Um, but after you do one or two, it's basically all the same and I've got help at the garage. So like right now I will still come into, there's still stuff where I'm like, how in the world am I going to get this fork lower loose? Like it's rusted solid and like the car guys bring out their torches and like, you know, nice. we, get, we get it done. And, and so, yeah, I'm still learning stuff. Like, but you built a good network around you to, of people you trust to ask questions about. Oh this. yeah. Yeah. Not only these guys, but like the car club guys, Tom Drozwicki, like I was talking to, to, to Simple Tom, the mini bike maniac guy that we talked about last time, like this today, we were talking today and like, that's another thing. So like I've stopped, I'll stop buying bikes and I'll get a message from somebody like, oh, did you see this bike? And it's in another state. And it's like, how much is it going to cost to ship? Like, <laughs> man, like, like I don't want people to stop sending me that stuff because this, the bike today was super cool, but also it's not helping my, <laughs> it's yeah. not helping my space issues in the garage any, but yeah, it's, it hits that collector, that little collector point in your brain. Yeah, you're like, yeah. I just like seeing them together. It's yeah, nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I just told my wife how, oh, Hey, we're going to start, like, I'm going to stop buying mini bikes. We're going to start, I'm going to start saving some money. I'm going to collect dollars. And then, yeah another mini bike shows up. Yeah, there. <laughs> so there is a common theme throughout all of our podcasts through people with different walks of life is just that the community is just there. It seems like a very open, easy to talk to community. And for people who just want to get started in the mini bikes at whatever age, seems like it. mini bikes are affordable, information is accessible, and the community is given. Is that how you see it? Yeah, definitely. Like a mini bike, isn't expensive. Like you can get cheap mini bikes still. Like they're still out there. You might have to be on marketplace or offer it up all the time. You might have to have a job where you're on conference calls all day so you can just look at marketplace and be the guy that sees it pop up for fifty bucks or hundred bucks. But they're still out there. And then yeah, you come up here and get parts and you don't have to get your parts all at once. And yeah. It's as cheap as you wanted to make it basically. Or as expensive way, as you want to make it. Way cheaper than a project car. For sure, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. I mean, how much money have you soaking into the Datsun? Zero. Okay. Uh, I mean, I bought that stuff in Houston, so a uh, hundred bucks maybe. Okay. Well, that's yeah. Not, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Cheaper than mini bike. Yeah. Cheaper uh, than uh, some mini bikes. Yeah. Okay. So you were at last year's GPS 180. Yeah. And so, but you just like going out there just to hang out with the community. I just like to hang. So I've been at both of them. The first one, I was there for the day of the event. This last one, I was there on warm up day and just hung out with Jeremy, you guys, yeah. and I think the next, I think it was cold. I think I was yeah. just like, I wasn't racing. Like I would, it wasn't, I had nothing in like there were, I didn't have anything invested in it. So yeah. like, I'm not freezing, I'm not freezing for it. So a <laughs> uh, warm up day was all I could hang. Now, would you have any advice for anyone coming up to this third one? Like, do you plan on, so you plan on coming up to the third one? Yeah, for sure. I'll Race day or the day before? Which both. Way? Oh. Yeah, I mean, weather, weather yeah. permitting. Yeah, both. What is more exciting? Seeing the starting line and all hundred bikers go at it at the same time or the more just the hangout aspect? I think the hangout aspect, like talking to you guys, like watching how it all goes down. I rode with you on like a couple, yeah. like a one, definitely one rescue where we had to go save somebody who broke down on, on warm up day. So yeah. that was nice. Just being out there and hanging out guys that are into stuff. Like you guys are into racing and be going fast. Like 
I'm not into that, but I enjoy seeing you guys have a good time with it. And so what would your advice be for someone who wants to get into it? Because we've had a lot of people on who are like, oh, racing. I love, I, you know, I want to go as fast as I can or I want to hit the toughest trail. But for someone who's more on the collecting side, what is the easiest way to get started on it? Would you tell people just start watching Marketplace and offer up, Or do you think it's, should they go into a shop or go to a meetup and try and talk to people and see what they can land in terms of a frame? one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, to get into it as far as buying one, yeah, I would probably watch just the forums, like kind of get an idea of what you like. Like okay. if, if you don't want to dump a lot of money, I'd probably like get an idea of what you want first and then start watching the marketplace and offer up and Craig's, Craigslist is still actually a thing. I'm watching those things and you kind of have an idea of what you want so you don't buy the doodle bug first and then <laughs> go buy the vintage bikes, like just buy the vintage bikes first. And then yeah, go to, if you're, if you happen to be local, come up to GPS and find out like how Taylor lined the break up on the horse it downstairs and or you know the how he got that to work and just start figuring things out like that okay and the forums what about the vintage bikes appeals to you so much is it the lines or is it yeah i think it's the lines it's kind of the i wouldn't say clunkiness of them but just the like just when you look at some of them you, you feel like you're in the 70s like some of the hornet some of the colors like the cat mini bikes some of the cat mini bikes just looking at them i was talking i was at rick's place not that long ago and you just look at a cat mini bike and they just look like a vintage mini bike. They just, they did that. Yeah. They did those bikes so great. Like the colors and the, the lines of those bikes. Like a timelessness almost. Yeah. 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 And they're the chain guards, like every bit of those bikes is just super cool, super vintage. Okay. Gotcha. If I was to shoot a mini bike documentary on how mini bikes started and all the different brands that came up throughout the years, who would I talk to? Where would I go? You'd go to forums probably you'd go to tom Trzwicki without a doubt you talk to tom at all on i i don't i i do know the name just because that bike. last name <laughs> oh yeah yeah and the mini bike maniac stuff yes. the all the drawing the red yeah. yes yeah that guy's encyclopedia of mini bikes and uh yeah the forums facebook groups so but tom would be your go-to but tom though? would be my go-to guy yeah, okay for sure. so if i wanted to even trace it back even further he'd be like yeah you need to talk to this person in california because he knows Definitely that much. Yeah, and I don't think you would. He would have to refer you to anybody. Like I think he knows that much that he would just tell you. Like he's got. It's crazy his, the amount of bikes he's got and the amount of bikes that he doesn't have, but still knows not only like the name of them, but like where they were manufactured or who put them out or what stores sold them, like that stuff. Like Whoa. it's a lot of information. And where does Tom live? Wisconsin somewhere. Oh, okay. We got to make a trip to Wisconsin. <laughs> it's time. I think okay. we were going to do that anyways. So. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Okay. So he's someone we should definitely have on the podcast. Oh, uh, yeah, for sure. I think everybody should have Tom on. All right, Tom, reach out. <laughs> Tom, I'm Dang. Jason. This is Zane. That's Bernie. We got Harley over here. We'll be at your house shortly. <laughs> yeah. So the GPS 180, we talked about going fast. And, you know, that's kind of scary fast out there because there's rocks, boulders, hill climbs, a dragon's backbone. Yeah. Would you go 100 miles an hour on some on a mini bike on something flat? flat uh, pavement? No, I'd go like 40 miles. Okay, so 40 is kind of your limit. Can, so what about going 100? Is it just being that top speed on something so small? Something so small, something just like, I mean, I've never rode motorcycle. I could just, I've got zero experience with that kind of, <laughs> just that kind of stuff. Like, and yeah, and like going fast on a mini bike that I built, like I don't trust myself. I don't trust that I, <laughs> that I tightened all those bolts. And it's one of the things, one of the guys at the garage, like will get me on every time. He's like, oh, look at this. And it's like a totally loose, like bolt on the back. I'm like, oh, uh, I was getting to that. Yeah. <laughs> So we're going to build up a bike. We're going to say, all right, Harley, we're at the drag strip. Go 100 miles an hour. You would probably just pass it on. Uh, yeah, I'd just be like, hey, I'll take the video. Of you do it. <laughs> okay. Like, <yeah. laughs> okay. Good to know. For Go Power Sports, as someone um, we want to see Go Power Sports keep growing, is there anything as a consumer that you see that maybe we should add to our repertoire or do differently or do more community meetups or more Saturday meetups? Is there anything you would like to see from us? Oh, later hours on Saturday would okay. be cool. Or oh. maybe a couple of hours on a Sunday would be cool. So like, so I work Monday through Friday. I can't get here on by five on the weekdays. Mm -hmm. Super small thing to complain about since you guys are so no, close. We need to know. We so, need to know this stuff. But so Saturday, you know, you start working on something on a mini bike and you're like, oh crap, I need one of these tires or I need this tube or whatever. Oh, that's another thing. I'll remind me about tubes. Get you a tube, gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, you look at your watch like, oh crap, it's already one thirty or whatever, okay. or it's 1 or whatever. And these guys are closed. Or Maybe Which, we, extend, we could extend the hours on Saturday, but have the extended time be for the mini bike meetup. Hmm. So that way it's like 
still accessible. If it's still accessible, something. but we have a skeleton crew hanging out or something. I would say that's one of the frustrations as someone who's building a mini bike is not having all the parts and then having to actually leave that house because yeah. there's something you just don't have. So I can appreciate that answer because I too have been put in that position where I'm just like, where do I go? What right. am I going to do now? Oh, yeah. this place is closed. Great. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. Then you're Googling like, does Northern tool carry blah, blah. And of course they don't. Like, yeah. What about tubes again? Or is oh. that off, offline? <laughs> uh, maybe offline. No, uh, <laughs> you guys need to get vent valve tubes. Like, I think maybe you guys can't get those or something. I can't it, it, so is. where they're at, at a 90? Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's good to know. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, Tim knows this. But okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> remind him. I'll remind him. So we also talked about mini bikes being affordable to get in. We are now going to be unveiling Rascal Light. Okay. So Rascal Light is going to be our mini bike kit. For 500 bucks, you can get the Rascal frame, a 98cc engine, tires and wheels. You can customize it as much as you want. You can paint your frame whatever color you want. But 500 bucks gets you in the game to at least have a mini bike. A riding mini bike. Yeah. Is that something you think that's good for the mini bike community? Yeah, that sounds awesome. That's like, it's a very doable price point for a mini bike that's ready to go. You don't have to cut anything off of, you don't have to like source parts for, because it's, it's yeah. the kit, right? Yeah. It's everything. That's awesome. It's our most economical parts put on the Rascal bike. It does have a 98cc engine. We've tested it. It'll get us up to 24, 25 miles an hour. That's my sweet spot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and it, what's even great is that, yeah, it's 500 bucks. You get everything there, but you could also grow with it to where that engine will take out and you can put a tilting engine in there if you did want it to really get after it. Oh, cool. And then if you wanted to add front suspension to it, it'll slide right onto this frame. If you want to get hydraulic brakes, it'll slide onto this thing. But for 500 bucks, get you in. Can I set you up with one? What kind of brake does it have? <laughs> right now, it just has a Coleman mechanical brake to it. Like I said, these okay. are this is the most economical yeah. we can get a mini bike That's awesome. delivered to you. This, Very cool. This is as uh, approachable a mini bike as we can make for everyone. <laughs> now, hopefully, one day we can keep these bikes going to where they become a vintage collector. I think we, it would dope to be kind of like the Hornet of the early 2000s. Yeah. But that Hornet does have a pretty sweet look. It seems like with the seats, the way the tubes are bent, yeah. it does have a unique look to yeah, it. Yeah. Where do you see mini biking going as a hobby? Like, but just as a whole? Because do you think it's going to start veering more towards people who are into riding and and doing like the racing stuff or do you think that as time goes on obviously the vintage bikes are going to become harder to come by new things are going to become vintage do you think that the collector game there is going to continue to grow as well i think the collector game is going to grow continue to grow i think right now it seems like anyway on the facebook groups like right now it's like i don't know if it's the uh the Meekum stuff or what but like bikes are going for crazy amounts and like these really crazy nice bikes will pop up but it's like a couple thousands of dollars and yeah they're nice bikes but like i don't know what that's going to do to to prices of stuff and like they're still going to be paid they're still going to be i think they're i don't know it's hard to say mm-hmm. and i think yeah the racing stuff just seems like it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger like gotcha so, so uh, would you attend racing events as someone i mean obviously you came out for the 180 mm-hmm. but if we were hosting like a drag event or something would you come out and support oh yeah for even sure. if you're not gonna <laughs> yeah like anytime rick is around or shane any of those guys that have been around this stuff for in this area like i'd go to a lot of events i went to the harley davidson race at the dealership and oh nice. yes yeah, i've okay. got a bunch of t-shirts from like rick's t-shirt and like but rick does a lot of cool old school bikes yeah uh, so it's not hard to support rick but like the demon city mini bikes now i've got some of their shirts i'm like yeah anytime those guys are, are doing any kind okay. of racing or anything i'll come out there and hang out because it's still mini bikes like yeah. i don't want to race but i'll watch my buddies race for sure that's awesome yeah and yeah. that comes back to the the community is just very, very close-knit and very welcoming. <laughs> oh, yeah. <for laughs> like, sure. they'll welcome anyone into it, which is yeah. nice. Yeah, and it's just like anything else. Like, you got to act right, too. Like, yeah, Oh, yeah. I mean, you can't just show up and be putting your feet up on the table. Yeah, but, throw yeah. your helmet. <laughs> throw your helmet. Like, I've seen that. A lot. It was years ago, but I've seen helmets being thrown. It's like, oh, at a race? Yeah, yeah. Just people's yeah. bad attitudes. But. Oh, that's not, that's no. That's yeah. No point, <laughs> oh, man. I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> Video here of just us throwing helmets on the ground. <laughs> Perfect. Well, Harley, thank you so much for coming out and hanging out with us today. Yeah, thank you, guys. Hopefully you enjoy your swag. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Thank you for your insight and your input. So thank you. Awesome. Thank you, guys. And we want to tell all you guys, if you have any comments, make sure to leave them down below. Be sure to like, subscribe, and as always, ride on. Thank you, sir. Great job. Yo, dude, thanks for coming out. Yeah.